Good evening. My name is Shannon Haddock, and I am a library specialist here at the Hoover Library in Birmingham, Alabama. The, tonight is the last of our Stories of Exile programming, and uh, we are here to discuss the wonderful book, African Town, by Irene Latham and Charles Waters. We were lucky at, to have the authors come on Tuesday night uh, to present about their research of the book and their collaboration working together to write the book. This is a YA book, which means young adults. And uh, it's it's not really uh, just for YA. It's, it's for everyone. It's very accessible. And the way in which it's written is uh, very intriguing. It's a novel in verse. They use um, multiple uh, methods of writing in poetry, in verse. Um, the different characters have voices throughout the story, and each character is treated a different way in its poetic style. Um, they, the story revolves around, if you don't already know, um, that the 1860 um, shipment of uh, African Americans from Benin, Africa to Mobile, Alabama. This was done like almost 50 years after it was banned uh, around the world to ship humans as slaves. Um, it started as a bet between a man named Tim Mayer, who was a, a quite a prominent individual from a prominent family in Mobile. He was, uh, he placed a bet with someone. I think it was the equivalent of like $500 or even less than that. It wasn't all that much money. He said that he could, in fact, you know, go under the radar and not get caught and go to Africa and get slaves because they were talking about how um, the slaves they had, uh, you know, j just didn't have enough of them and all these things. And he said, well, I think I could, you know, go, we could get a ship and go to Africa. What he did was hire William Foster, who brought the Clotilde, which was a schooner, this schooner was retrofit to hold human souls in it. And um, most of the crew on the ship had no idea um, they were doing this because the act itself was punishable by death. So William Foster would have been uh, guilty. All of his crew would have been guilty had they known. Um, so the ship left and went to Benin um, in the and in the kingdom of Dahomey, 110 individuals were picked, including a royal family member. Um, there was a king, Galele, um, who's who he, he the one of the um, inheritors of the crown. Um, was a bit of an upstart and had a, a very individu individualistic uh, opinions about things. And the family wanted to get rid of him because they were afraid of what he might do. So they sold him to slavery. They, they uh, He was one of the young men um, brought to the Barracoon, which is the place jail um, that where the captors are the, the captives are held until they're sold into slavery. These individuals got to know each other, and once uh, they were put together on the, the clotilde, they formed a very tight bond. Um, you could tell by the stories. The the uh, great thing about this book is they gave voice to the unheard voices of the women on the ship. Um, historical records, uh, there's quite a few interviews with one, uh, the last remaining slaves that were living in, um, 
in and around this town that they created called Africa Town. At one point, it was called African Town, so that's where they got the name of the book. Um, lots of interviews with the elders, the elder men in the community, but none really from the women. So Irene and Charles wanted to give voice to these women. So the book is written in different chapters and each person gets a page. She gives voice, they give voice to um, the ship captain, William Foster. They give voice to the women. Um, the main character is Kosolo, who is, um, he ends up being the main um, figure, uh, keeping people together in Africa town years later. And all of these um, people have descendants right there in Africa town today. If you, about 2018, um, there was a lot of uh, international press about the Clotilde. Um, there were stories from the Smithsonian to, um, you know, New York Times, everything about um, the story of this last slave ship. Um, and there was a hunt by National Geographic explorers to find the ship. Um, this is about 2018. Um, a reporter called Ben Rains was uh, intrigued by all this, and he himself does eco tours. I've been on a boat with him down in the Delta in Mobile, and it is fabulous to do. He's a great naturalist, along with being an, an investigative reporter. Well, he was challenged, and he found the Clotil. According to historical records, the family uh, misled people as to where it was eventually um, uh, docked and burned. They burned it because they didn't want any evidence of their crimes. And of course, they misled people as to where it was because of the crime they committed. Um, and until 2019, all of that remained a secret. Um, and the Mayer family remained quiet about it. Um, ben Rains did find the Clotilde, um, ironically enough, right in front of a marker that says Mayer on it um, to this day. And um, so there is an annual festival in Africatown um, celebrating the ancestors. Um, one of the things that you notice about Africa Town is Casolo and the survivors wanted to recreate because they searched for years for ways to get back to Africa, to get back to home. Um, they couldn't. And they fought and saved and scrimped to save to buy the land that is now Africa Town. They wanted to recreate what they could of their villages. So the houses that are built down there, everything is pretty unique. Um, some of the first houses were, are still there. Um, the festival they have is reminiscent of what the uh, original descendants would have, how they would have celebrated all of that. Um, now, as of 2023, there is a visitor center and a memorial. Um, it's now ranked as one of the top tourist destinations in Alabama, um, also one of the top 15 in the United States by Smithsonian. Um, their stories did not die. It seems like it just kind of was hidden for a long, long time. Um, there is a lot in this book to absorb but it's written in a way that young adults can um, absorb and take in. Um, I'll read just a few things that from the book, and um, you can get the book at the Jefferson County Library Cooperative, any library, you should be able to borrow it. Um, I'm going to read Kosolo. Our story. Be still, my children. Listen with your ears and your heart. 
Our story starts with this mark on my right cheek, these chipped teeth. See, this is how you know I am who I say I am. The town where I was born is called Bonte. It's nowhere near here, not in African town, not in Alabama. This town's way across the ocean on the west coast of Africa in the kingdom of Dahomey. My family's home was round, two-story adobe with a terrace surrounded by hills, about a day's walk to the sea. Someday maybe you'll see the world the way I had seen it in Bounty. Then you will know how the sun kisses the earth, melts like honey over the land. It's no wonder I believed all of life would be bright and sweet. No wonder it still shocks me that the world can be so hard, so dark. But that darkness, it brought me here. It brought you here. This is our story. I'll um, randomly pick a couple of other characters' readings. And uh, this is Glele, uh, Night Music. My heart pounds in time to men my men's feet, marching in darkness to Bonte. They carry me the kick because kings should always be lifted to command respect. Each attack feels the same and different. I know we will prevail, but will they be strong stop? Will they fight or concede? My heart pounds as we sneak and surround. Outside town gates, my troops kill too right away, no sound at all. I whistle long, short, long, and my men take the gate. They explode into shouts, their axes swinging as my father's spirit fills my soul with a hunger that can be fed only by certain victory. Now, Glele is uh, in Africa. It, this is before he is captured and um, sold to slavery. Uh, he led men in battle. Uh, as you could see from the layout, there's lots of white space. And when you're a young adult, a lot of times that helps you focus on the words more easily. You, found, you find things in the book. Um, here is uh, one of the slaves, uh, James. It's called Hiding Out. Master Timothy barks out, take him, James. So for 11 days, we move from one swamp to the next like frogs jumping lily pads. I'm scared we'll get caught by the authorities. Each African beds down on damp, jagged ground each night. I rely on hand signals to convince them to keep their loud whispers gentle as summer clouds. I do notice this young woman in rags who strides straighter than a walking stick. Her face brightens like daybreak when our eyes meet. I smile, look down, then strain my ears till I hear her name, Kahunika. James is a slave in Mobile who is a part of the operation, but he doesn't want to be. Um, you have to understand that James was born into slavery. And these people who have come from Africa in 1860, will only go through about five years of slavery. They know freedom. And a lot of the people that they end up working with and being surrounded with and um, becoming family with were born into slavery. And that is a whole different, I, I think, my conception of it. It would be a whole different way of, of seeing the world. Um, these people had their freedom ripped away from them only five years ago. And, and some of the slaves that they work with have been slaves all their lives. So um, the two have to intermingle and make a community. Um, the people that decide to create the community at Africa Town do so with a lot of communication. They decide on um, you know, how to, in essence, govern them themselves. They decide together that they're going to save money um, because it doesn't look like they're going home, that they're going to save money to buy land there. 
Um, eventually, Casola goes to Tim Mayer after slavery is abolished and says, you know, you owe us. You, we, we deserve to have some land. And of course, Timothy Mayer, you know, he never saw it, them as anything but property. And he does not agree to give them any land. He eventually sells them some land. And that land today is Africa Town. It is um, surrounded on all, almost all four sides by heavy industry, much of which is still owned by the uh, mayor family. And um, the, the industry has caused an environmental disaster. Um, African town incidents of cancer are way above average. Um, most residents in Africa town either have had uh, some form of illness caused by um, the environment or know someone, a loved one who has died from it. Uh, but yet they persist in creating this community. Um, and a lot of the residents that are descendants um, are now celebrating their ancestors even more because they know the story and it's kind of come full circle. Um, the things that they've learned about a lot have been brought out in the book and through other books written and the descendants themselves. Um, one of the descendants is featured heavily in the Netflix documentary Descendant. If you have a chance, please watch that. It is about the unfolding story of find and the community's reckoning with what this means to them. Um, one of the major um, characters in that is Joc Jocelyn uh, Davis. She wrote the introduction to African Town. And um, since this is for young adults, they also created a very in-depth uh, guide, reader's guide, teacher's guide, and I'm going to not get it right because I can't find, put my fingers on it. Ah, yes. Um, shoot, no, that's not it. Anyway, the discussion guide was written by a descendant. She is a school uh, education leader in the Philadelphia area, and her uh, direct descendant was Galele, who is the royalty that was uh, sold onto the Cotillon ship. She herself has, um, you know, written this really, really in-depth reader's guide uh, talking about all aspects of um, the book and the history of the ship. Uh, also, um, the, so I recommend the, the death documentary Descendant. I also recommend Ben Rain's book, Last Slave Ship. Um, his is uh, kind of talking about his journey to this discovery. And um, all of these books, of course, can um, be checked out at the library. The documentary, I'm not 100% sure it's in the collection yet. But um, Irene Latham and Charles Waters met each other um, through putting together a book about racism for younger children called Can I Touch Your Hair? Um, Irene Latham is an Alabama author who has written a number of books involving poetry, involving, um, I think her latest is about um, going to the moon. Um, and, and poetry has been a part of her life throughout her life. Um, she's from a very uh, well-traveled family because her parents decided that they needed to travel the world to see and make better uh, decisions in their lives. Charles, on the other hand, grew up in Philly, and he uh, didn't really know poetry. He had learning disabilities growing up, but through his family's love and guidance, he found help uh, in order to graduate with honors from college. And he got, he is an actor 
also, I should say. Um, he got a job with uh, Poetry Alive, which at the time was a touring company that went to schools and taught kids about the love of poetry. And in that um, span of years, he learned, I think he said like 120 poems, um, everything that's famous, uh, he has remembered and recites. Um, and through that, um, opened up this world of poetry to him. Um, he also has a new book out and um, he, the, the uh, co collaboration between Irene and Charles is very lovely. And, and I have read all the books they've done, written together and they're wonderful. So I highly recommend those too. I'm going to wrap this up by saying uh, that uh, if you haven't read African Town, I highly recommend putting it in your to be read list on your to be read list for 2024. Well, that's hard to say. <laughs> anyway, um, thank you so much. And I appreciate everyone who has stuck with me through the Stories of Exile programs. Thank you to the Birmingham Jewish Federation for helping to fund it, along with the Yiddish Book Center. Um, I really appreciate everyone who has made this uh, program series a success. Thank you and have a wonderful holiday.